Hey guys, it's Mike. Welcome back to the shop. So I've done some thinking and I've decided to make a kind of a big change to the channel. I'm going to stop the mixed bag goodies. The last one, um, which I'm uploading today, is number 25 and I think that's going to be the end of it. I might occasionally put, put together some kind of a, a mixed video and I'll probably call it a mixed bag goodies. But um, I want to start doing just single project videos and include all the steps on what I'm doing and kind of give more explanation of why I'm doing what I'm doing and, and get more into detail on the project. The mixed bag goodies to me seem kind of chaotic. I've had a few complaints that my videos get kind of mixed up because my editing skills are not that great and I've misplaced videos or I'll film a bunch of stuff and then upload a bunch of stuff and delete a bunch of stuff and videos get lost in the mix and this way I can work on a project, upload the videos into a project folder, and they're there. And I don't have to worry about missing stuff and putting stuff together and pulling stuff from, from different projects here and there. It's just one project, start to finish, here you go. So that's what this week's video is going to be, or this video is going to be. It's going to be an SKS muzzle break. Customer contacted me, told me what he wanted, told me he couldn't find it anywhere else. He's been looking and thought maybe I could help him. So he sent me a sketch, uh, which is what you guys are gonna see in a minute here, and told me, you know, hey, I want a jungle type muzzle brake for an SKS. These are the dimensions. Can you do it? We, we worked on everything and I, I've, I've finished it, packaged it up, and it's ready to ship right now. Uh, I'd like some feedback from you guys. Let me know what you think um, of doing project videos like this. I think it'll be a little bit better for the channel, for people searching for stuff, because I don't have to worry so much about the tags. If someone searches, you know, for an SKS muzzle brake, my videos will come up because that's what this video is going to be titled. It's going to be titled SKS muzzle brake jungle style. And I think it'll help me, help my business, and it'll help the, the channel kind of flow better. So um, let me know what you think. Leave me some feedback. And I hope you enjoy. Okay, so here's the uh, sketch for the muzzle brake from the customer. So the inside diameter is 0.533, and that's going to extend all the way to the end here. Uh, this outside diameter, I haven't actually calculated that yet. So 0 0.533 plus 0.25. So this is going to end up being 0 0.783 or thereabouts. And the reason he's having me do it this long here is 2.91 is the distance from the end of the muzzle to the edge of the sight. That way this takes up the whole rest of the barrel. I'm going to put three evenly spaced set screws on the bottom, which I'm going to use some uh, 10, 32, 1 8 uh, Allen set screws. And then this section is going to be one and a quarter inch here and taper down. It's going to stay at one inch. And I've got a piece of one inch uh, 4140 that I'm going to be machining this out of. So I cut it to 5 inches. This comes out to 0.416. So I cut it a little bit long so that I have a little bit of room to play with. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to check it up, face both ends, bore it out um, to size. This section first. And then I'm going to turn this outside diameter with the, this in a live center so that I can get the outside diameter here set and then I'll put it in, um, chuck it back up, and then turn this um, flared section here. Uh, I haven't really figured out exactly what angle I'm going to use, but and the customer wasn't specific on what angle he wanted. So I'm going to try to copy similar to what some of the other um, jungle breaks look like and go with that. 
Now we've got the part chucked up here in the collet chuck because that's what was on my machine, so I figured I'd just leave it there. It'll work fine for this operation. Let's see. We are set at three thousandths feed rate. I think we can jump up the feed rate a little bit. We'll go with ten thousandths. Where's ten thousandths?
about something I'm gonna need to reset here. I gotta I'm gonna mark my drill bit. I'm gonna see if I have a bushing. I used to have stop bushings for half and three quarters and stuff. I'm gonna see if I can find my little stop bushing so I can throw it on so I know when I'm at depth. Well I couldn't find my uh bushings that I made. No clue what happened to them. I'm always losing crap like that. But I've got a sharpie mark here. When this hits the edge, we're at depth. So fire back up and keep going here. So now, I need to dig around through my boring bars and see if I have one that'll bore a half inch hole almost three inches deep and see what we come up with. I don't know how well this is going to come out. I just reground this. I don't know what it was originally ground like this for, but it, uh, it came out to a point over here, so I just touched up the edges and honed it, put a small radius in, and it, it just barely sticks out past this edge here. Um, I checked and it, it's gonna give me, that's the, the full depth that I need. So I'll come up and just lightly touch here, move over and then come back and take a couple cuts and see how it does. And I'll be using my uh, DRO for the depth Forgot to tighten up all my points here. I'm going to start with a, just a 5,000th cut to see how it handles it.
feels like it's cutting okay. Um, I'm hitting the edge of the drill and so there's a little bit of a angle that it's hitting and it's cutting on the front a lot. I can feel the chatter picking up. So what I'm going to do, since I have the DRO and I can, I'm going to come in and just make small cuts across. Just kind of come in and kiss it and cut and kiss it and cut until I get my depth to where I need it. So the other thing I'm going to do is get my air compressor hooked up and over here so I can get all the chips out of here. Alright, so the boring bar wasn't working to cut that bottom edge, it's too much chatter. So what I did, I have a half inch drill bit that was broke. So I just ground this side down a little bit and put a nice flap across the front here. I'm going to turn it real slow and just slowly feed it in until I hit that shoulder. And then I'll take a measurement with uh, my micrometer, or not my micrometer, my uh, calipers, and see what the depth is once I get that edge cleaned up in there. feels like it cleaned out. Get these chips out of here. Only way I can see the bottom of that hole well is using my camera on my phone. Which if I can get this to work right, I'll attach this to the picture for you guys. So, let me take, actually, let's take a measurement to see how, how deep we are there before I take anything off. Two eight seven three zero. Then we need to go to two ninety one. So I'm going to bring this in. What I did is I, I brought this in until it touched the bottom, and then that's my camera up here. I've got a dial here. I just zeroed the dial out. I backed it off, but it's touching right there. That's set to zero. So what I'll do, we're at 2873. We need to go to 291. So I'll do the math, figure how far I need to go in. And then we'll just take that cleanup cut with this setup. Alright, so we need to take 37 thousandths out. So I got it backed off here. Start to lay the come in, we should touch off right there. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Thirty-five. We'll stop there. Clear all of our chips out of the way here. And 
we'll take another measurement and see how we did. I'd say that's good. Four thousandths over. Granted, it's a caliper reading, but I think we're good there. Next, we need to get the bore diameter here. Um, customer said his barrel was 0.553. So I want to go. about two to three thousandths over so I'm gonna shoot for 0 0.555 and get my bore my uh, bore gauges and we'll, uh, we'll see what it's at right now All right, I'm gonna try to do this on camera here So we're at 508 right now. We'll get the boring bar back on here. Let's see if I can get you guys in a better position to see this here. Alright, so we're all set up and ready to bore here. And I'm gonna flip this camera setting around here. I think this will be a slightly better view on what's going on here. So I've got my feed right here. I'm going to go to 5 thousandths, which is kind of slow, but this is a really small boring bar. I don't want to mess it up and have any kind of crazy issues. off of what I was shooting for so I'm fine with that instead of being 
55, I'm at 56, so I think that'll be fine when it comes to the clearance fit. I'm going to put a small chamfer here, then just clean up a little bit. set and get the life center in to turn the outside diameter. Alright, I have the part stuck out here. Uh, there's just a little tiny bit left inside the jaw there. And I've got 291 from this edge marked here for my stop point. And then there's about inch and a quarter. So that's going to be the full length of the brake, what's, what's showing right there. Um, I'm going to make a couple cuts, see how the machine handles it today. Uh, last time I tried turning this 4140, it wasn't cooperating with me at all so we'll see how it does today i'm going to start with a 10 thousandths feed rate and see how that does i'm going to be turning at about at about 600 rpm finish isn't horrible but it's not exactly what I wanted here oh come on let's see that's at 806 thousandths. I dialed this diameter into the DRO, so we'll see how, how it goes.
look too bad. out of the way here. I'll just hit it with some emery cloth real quick and clean it up. Alright, so I got it flipped around, getting ready to drill it, and I decided to put it in the four jaw just so I could true it up off of this surface because I can't hold it here. Turn you up so you can see. I can't hold it here, the part that was machined, to match the bore. So I figured this is the, uh, the next best thing here. I'm pretty far out right now, so... There we go. So now that that's dialed in, you can see that it's the needle's not even hardly moving. It's staying right on that. So we're we're good there. Get my indicator out of the way here. to reposition the camera to get uh, set up to drill here.
We gotta figure out. We're in a part of it. Ooh, that's hot. Debating on how to do this. I don't know if I want to drill that out to half an inch to there and then part it off that way it gives me less to part. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> well, I don't think that's gonna work. I'm just cracked. See, there's not a whole lot of uh, material there, the way that this thing's designed. Which means that's the end of this machine for right now. I'm going to have to remachine a new screw for it on my little Atlas. Project pause, project two starting.